All right, it is part two of our four-part series. Who would make the cover of College Football 25 for if it were an all-time Vandy player? Today we look at Earl Bennett, Zach Cunningham, and Casey Hayward. Who's it going to be? Buckle up and find out. Here we go. You are Locked On Bandy, your daily podcast on the Vanderbilt Commodores, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into the Locked On Vandy podcast on the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Corey Burton. On today's episode, we kick off part two of our series in honor of the release of EA, College, EA Sports College Football 25. We, we will look at who will be on the cover for the game for Vanderbilt if they did a cover for the all-time best. I will present you with 12 options based on the feedback that I got and my own opinion, and we'll eventually narrow it down to one, maybe two uh, front and back covers, perhaps. Uh, we'll see kind of how it goes. But today we're going to look at Earl Bennett, Zach Cunningham, and Casey Hayward, uh, Jordan Matthews, uh, Chris Williams, and... Um, Ralph Webb were, uh, were who we looked at yesterday, so buckle up. This is going to be a fun one, man. Thanks for making Locked on Vandy your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube as a part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Speaking of the everyday, speaking of every day, thank you to the everydayers who make all of this possible. Couldn't do it without you. I'm very blessed to have you guys. Again, follow us on social media at Locked On Vandy. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for twenty dollars off of your first purchase. Well, we our first first up is Earl Bennett on the list. Okay, so why would Earl Bennett be on this list? Well, many would consider him probably the best receiver to ever come through Vandy. He was drafted by the Chicago Bears in the third round of the 2008 NFL draft. Um, he is currently 36 years old. He ran a 4-5-1 in his heyday, um, played wide receiver for uh, for the Bears. So um, one thing, um, he's a PhD too, Dr. Earl Bennett. So that's pretty cool. But uh, S- absolute SEC legend. He is the executive director of player development and administration currently at Vanderbilt. So he is in the building. He joined the staff in 2021 and was promoted uh, to that his current position uh, this past year. So uh, he was director of player development. Now he's executive director of player development. So there's somebody underneath him. Okay. He is, uh, he was, he's a member of the Vanderbilt athletics hall of fame class of 2017 was selected. Like I said, in the third round of the NFL draft 70, 70th overall uh, by the Chicago bears. He played five seasons with them, uh, caught 185 passes for 2000, 277 yards and 12 touchdowns, teaming up with teammate Jay Cutler. So during his three-season Vanderbilt playing career, he earned a trio of all SEC honors and caught 236 passes for 2,852 yards and 20 touchdowns. He he uh, he left Vandy as the all-time leader in career receptions. He remains tied for most touchdown catches in a single game uh, in SEC history with five uh, which he did that against Kentucky in 2005. Earl Bennett was named an SEC legend in 2015. Uh, so that's uh, that's something that you know you you love to see there. Um, again, it's uh, he's one of those men that just kind of that early 2000s. Um, it's that early 2000s Vandy teams that, again, much like what we talked about with Chris Bennett wasn't very good as just an overall team, but like, man, was he fun to watch, man. Just like you knew, you knew when Jay Cutler dropped back to pass and this was at Vanderbilt, you knew when he dropped that drop back to pass, he was going to be uh, just, he would just rip it in there. Right. So again, some of his honors, first team, all sec 2005, second team, all sec 2005, according to the AP coaches poll, depending on what publication he was uh, 2005 first team SEC all freshman. That doesn't make sense. Um, 
but he he's he's been all conference teams, all American teams, things like that. Um, you know, he has the uh, he set the record for SEC career receptions uh, back then as well. So that's uh, that's good right there. So um, you know, just just watching watching his career at Vanderbilt, you know, you you knew even at 5'11", 210, you knew he was a difference maker when it when it came to Vanderbilt on offense. I mean, you you looked at him, you watched him. And he was always open. He was somebody that you just couldn't, you know, you you couldn't you couldn't cover him, right? And it's uh, you know, he, he was somebody that if you just threw the ball down there, if you needed a big first down, he's going to get it, right? If you needed a big catch in the end zone, if Jay Cutler needed to get out of you know get out of some pressure, or if he if they needed a big conversion. He was there, man. It was it was outstanding, and and to go back and watch this play when they beat Tennessee in two thousand five, that catch where he's got somebody draped all over him is incredible, right? And that was uh, that's just kind of the impact that he had. I mean, he was he was just kind of Mister Vanderbilt uh, during during that time during that era, and and you could not stop him, man. And it was. Uh, it was great to see. It was fun to watch, man. And something that any Vanderbilt fans would would watch, and you're you're sitting there going, "Okay, well, this guy is absolutely incredible." And the impact that he had on this team, the impact that he had on the community, the impact that he had uh, anywhere he went, you know, the, it it just it shows, man. And it absolutely is is there. It shows. It's evident because he is part of this Vanderbilt staff. He has come back. He got elected to the Hall of Fame. I mean, dude was such an dude was an elite route runner, an elite playmaker. I mean, he just catch balls in traffic. There was no there was no passives off limits. He was he was very precise in what he did, you know, finding space. He could get off press coverage. I mean, just some of the technical aspects that he has um, is uh can't be, you know, can't be understated for for a team that was Good, but not great. They were pesky, um, but he was somebody that was was a major factor in that. And so, you you love to kind of see him get his recognition in the Vandy Sports Hall of Fame. You love to see, you know, somebody that just, again, such a great person off the field, um, and impacting current Vanderbilt players right now. And, you know, he's, he's the guy that they go to. So he's the mentor that they have. He's somebody like Clark Lee, you know, like Harding, like Harding Harper, um, like, you know, like, like all those guys, like all the, the uh, Javon Hay, who's, uh, who's an honorable mention in this whole thing. These guys can bridge the gap of what is expected out of a Vandy player, what it's like to play in Vanderbilt. And so, um, man, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm excited that he's on this list and, you know, I don't know if this is going to be a, uh, I don't know if this is going to be the guy. Um, only time will tell on that obviously, but, um, it's, you know, it's going to be interesting to, to see kind of where, where this list goes. And, and so, you know, Earl Bennett is definitely somebody that, uh, most definitely, most definitely, definitely deserves to be on this list and, and seeing him play you just knew okay you got to find an answer for 10 okay i you know if you find an answer for 10 you're good and that's uh that's good so um i'm, I'm excited about that and uh you know i'm excited about what what they what what he brings to the table with the coaching staff now i you know i i think he was if, if you say name of any receiver He's probably the first one that comes to mind, hands down. Some people may say Jordan Matthews, but I, I think the first one that comes to mind is Earl Bennett to me. And he was kind of the first like major kind of star um, to, to rock the rock the star V for, uh, for this ball club. So, again, uh, very deserving of this list and very deserving of, of uh, being on the cover of of EA Sports College Football 25, um, him, and we'll talk about his teammate here on a later episode. So uh, that'll be fun. So Earl Bennett, man, star wide receiver, All American, All Conference, uh, Vandy Hall of Fame, current executive 
uh, current executive director of player development uh, for uh, for Vanderbilt football. So congrats to him on that position, on that promotion, and uh, we'll see. We'll see how this list shakes out. This will be an interesting list. I can't wait to kind of see as you guys vote um, how this thing kind of kind of rolls out. So here we go. That will uh, that will be interesting. So Zach Cunningham, man, that's another name to keep an eye on. Stay with stay with us. All right, eBay Motors, passion, drive. Patience, what brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your parts guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. All right, welcome back. It is part number two of the uh, series where we talk about uh, who would be on the cover uh, of NCAA or actually EA Sports College Football 25 uh, in honor of its release and in honor of its uh, comeback from a 10-year hiatus. I think this is a kind of a fun uh, series of shows just to kind of get you guys engaged a little bit, get you guys kind of out of the lurking phase and kind of into interacting with the show and, and, and getting hopefully some of these pl- former players uh, involved maybe some of these greats like Earl Bennett, um, Jordan Matthews, you know those guys, um, and some of the guys we talk we're going to talk about today. Maybe they'll get involved and maybe they'll uh, maybe they'll listen to the show and maybe they will join me on the show and 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 kind of hang out. So we we shall see. But thanks for making us your first listen. Make sure you make us locked on SEC your second listen. Okay. So next we're talking about Zach Cunningham. Okay. Um, Zach Cunningham is currently playing in the NFL. He is currently with the Philadelphia Eagles um, by way of the Houston Texans in the second round as a draft pick uh, onto the Tennessee Titans and now uh, has since joined uh, the Philadelphia Eagles at the linebacker position. So uh, somebody that, as a linebacker, you hated to see 41 in the lineup. You looked over there and said, oh, Bleep it a bleep, 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 bleep. We are going to have to figure out how to contain this guy. And he was at the linebacker position. He is somebody that kind of changed how how it worked. I mean, he's 6'4", 230 pounds. So, like, seeing somebody that big run around like that is, well, it's ridiculous. Let's just call it what it is, man. Um, just seeing him go sideline to sideline, make play after play after play. He'd make a play on jet sweep, and he'd stuff an inside zone for for minus two um, in the backfield. He he would he would sack the opposing quarterback. He was dropping back into pass coverage, making interceptions. He was just all over the field. He was a thorn in your side, right? Thorn in your side. That's uh that's another idiom for you guys. So um, again, uh, the. Uh, the pride of Pinson, Alabama, Pinson Valley High School. He was, here's his honors list, um, just to give you uh, some things. He was 2015 first team All American um, with every publication AFCA, AP, FWAA, Walter Camp, ESPN, USA Today, SI.com, and whoever else was making All American lists. Uh, he was definitely on my first team All America list, that's for sure. Uh, 2016 Butt Kiss Award finalist. He was a 2016 Chuck Bednarik Award semifinalist. He was 2015 and 16 Coach's First Team All SEC. Uh, the same two year span. Associated Press First Team All SEC, 2016 Midseason All American by all the publications, 2015. Uh, for all three of these, he was uh, third team All American and first team All Conference with uh, Phil Steele and ESPN. So, um, lot a laundry list of honors. Probably the most thing, probably the thing I remember him the most is when they upset Georgia 
in Athens. Derek Mason's job is hanging in the balance. He's on the hot seat. He's he's in the midst of kind of an abysmal season at this point. Need needed something to kind of get him get a spark going for this team. Uh, and that spark was um, Zach Cunningham stuffing Georgia on a fourth and one to win the game on a jet sweep. He just shot through the line of scrimmage and uh, he just tackled for a one yard loss, the human joystick, Isaiah McKenzie. And that was all she wrote in that game. And uh, I remember thinking, you got to have a plan for him. I remember thinking like, if you don't have a plan for him, he's going to wreck you. And he is, uh, he's going to wreck you. So, the, the thing about Zach Cunningham is what's what's interesting is he became the first Vandy player in team history to earn unanimous first team All America recognition, and the seventh player to ever claim consensus All America honors after earning first team All America honors from the AFCA, the Associated Press and the Football Writers Association of America, Walter Camp, and all those publications. Um, so he is. Um, well, he 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 did a lot of things, right? He uh, he finished that season in 2016 as the Southeastern Conference leader with 125 total tackles. So he led the led the conference in tackles. He was top ten nationally. Um, he is uh, he ranked among the national leaders and was tied for third in the conference with 16 and a half tackles for loss. He paced the SEC, ranked second nationally with four fumble recoveries. He was National Defensive Player of the Week by virtually every outlet. Um, that season, um, after he had a 19 tackle performance again in that road win against Georgia, that most important tackle was his tackle for loss to seal the game. Um, it was uh, man, he he closed the regular season with his second SEC defensive player of the week after posting 10 tackles, a forced fumble, and a recovery in their win over Tennessee. And I think that was their second straight win over Tennessee, actually. Um, just Again, like things that stand out about him. Like I could read these stats all day long. And, and thanks to VUCommodores.com, Vandy's official athletic site. And I'm reading his bio right now. And his bio is uh, feels like it's 37 pages. But, um, you know, he, he's he just game after game after game. I mean, he was just an absolute factor. And he is, uh, you know, each each year was – just a laundry list of things, right? And each game you watched him, you just – it was like a clinic for for how to play linebacker, right? And I haven't – like this type of linebacker play, like you would you would rank him up there. You would be like, man, this – like you would – I'm surprised it was, it, they waited till the third round to pick him. And, you know, I'm sitting there going, okay, what – like what is wrong with this guy for teams not to be picking him in the NFL draft? I mean, he's making sideline to sideline tackles – Maybe it was a speed thing. Maybe it was a quickness thing, I guess. I don't know. Maybe it was some sort of measurable that was keeping him and holding him back. So, I don't know. But, like, watching him against Georgia, watching him against Tennessee where he just – he was just a wrecking ball uh, the whole time. Watching him against Florida when he was when he was sacking um, – I don't even can't remember who was even playing quarterback for Florida that uh, during that stretch. But uh, whoever it was, was definitely – Scared of Zach Cunningham, definitely had nightmares of it for sure. Um, he, you know, he had four tackles for loss, a sack, and twelve other tackles against South Carolina. Posted two forced fumbles, two and a half tackles for loss at Houston. He, um, you know, he just he was a tackling machine, man, and and uh, he was, uh, you know, again in 2015. Where and, and there's another guy on this list, but he he had. Uh, he had 16 and a half tackles for loss, was the third highest total among SEC defenders in a regular season, uh, was most by Commodore since All-American linebacker Jamie Winborn registered 23 tackles for loss in 1999. So we'll talk about Jamie Winborn on a later episode. But um, it just you, you just you just watch and you're just in awe all the time watching him just go. And so – Again, he he's somebody that qualifies for this list because like he made such an impact on that defense. Like there was there were some games where like teams just didn't have a chance when he lined up. They just didn't have a shot. Like like Earl Bennett, you knew he was going to go off, right? Same was that Cunningham. Like you knew it was like, okay, we better have a plan for him. Most of the time that plan wouldn't work. So 
it's uh, it's pretty exciting to see uh, what what he brought to the table. He was fun to watch at Vanderbilt, and um, I'm sure every I'm sure every other school in the in the conference is probably thankful that he's no longer at Vanderbilt. So Zach Cunningham uh, on the list definitely uh, worth some consideration. So, um, but Casey Hayward's up next. Uh, a really fun player to watch currently uh, with the uh, Green Bay Packers. Um, really fun to watch there. So uh, stay tuned. We're gonna we're gonna break him down. We are presented by Game Time. That's right, Game Time. So, have you ever had a frustrating ticket buying experience? You weren't sure if you could find a last minute ticket, or like you didn't like you were surprised by some of the fees. Well, you shouldn't have to worry about that when you buy tickets to your next big event because they have the Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, theater events near you. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. So they're obsessed with finding ways to help you save money on tickets. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event, and even an hour after it starts. It's the best place to find last-minute seats. So you find exclusive flash deals and sponsor deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. With zone deals, you pick the section. Game time picks the seats. You get big time savings that way. And game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. Always, always, always. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. So take all the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app and create an account and use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last-minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right. Welcome back. Third and final segment. We are wrapping this thing up. Uh, we are in part two of our series looking at – all-time Vandy greats, uh, determining uh, who will be on the cover if they did an all-time cover. Um, Casey Hayward um, is currently a free agent, um, but he was uh, he was drafted by the Chargers. Uh, he's picked up by the Atlanta Falcons and the Green Bay Packers. Um, he was, like I said, he was, uh, no, he was drafted by Green Bay in 2012. Excuse me. Um, picked up by the Chargers, then uh, the Raiders, then the Falcons. So he was, uh, those are his jersey numbers. That's right. Um, so, man, it is, uh, it is absolutely outstanding. This is, this is a fun one. I love, what what uh, what he's done for the cornerback position? Um, you know, he was a, a second rounder uh, for the Green Bay Packers. Just an immediate impact when he stepped into the league. So he is he has come from he comes from Perry, Georgia, somewhere down my neck of the Perry High School. So Casey Hayward, um, he was uh, 2008 through 2011. So uh, he went up against my man Israel Troop. Uh, when they played against each other, but um, he is, uh, he was a three-year team captain, four-year um, leadership council at Perry high school for AAA offensive player of the year, all state DB and all middle Georgia. Um, he was all everything down there. Uh, his true freshman season, he, uh, he saw some action um, during that season. He played in every game. He was a nickel on the secondary, He played all the kicking teams and stuff like that. He played, uh, and he played in the bowl game, so he got to see what it was like to play in a bowl game. So he had um, he had eight total tackles, including three solos and three defended passes. Contributed two tackles and a forced fumble against Ole Miss in that win. So, uh, 2009, he was named uh, postseason most valuable defensive back award. Uh, he started every game at corner. He missed uh, a couple that he missed were due to injury, not play. He ranked fifth among Commodores in both total tackles and solos. He also um, he was defensive player of the week um, after um, a remarkable effort um, against LSU at 13 tackles, four tackles for loss. Uh, 
He had also the same weekly recognition after six tackles and a pick against Georgia in 2009. He also had eight tackles and a pick against Ole Miss. So he was just an absolute beast out there. It was Hayward Island. All right. He was one of the top DBs in the nation in 2010. Uh, he was named all SEC second team. Uh, defensive back by both the league coaches and the Associated Press writers started every game. Obviously, um, he uh, he ranked first in the SEC and third in the SEC in passes defended and interception total ranked second in the SEC, tied for fifth nationally. Um, he was um, posted pass defending ten of twelve games in at least three tackles in eleven of twelve games. He registered uh, picks against South Carolina and Tennessee, posted nine tackles in Georgia, South Carolina, and Arkansas as well. So he was just an absolute beast uh, his junior year. So you saw you saw this meteoric rise uh, in his play there, um, became an absolute force in 2010. 2012 was – or 2011, excuse me, was no different. He put together – um, one of the finest seasons ever by a uh, Commodore defensive back, which is why he's on this list. He was the first Vanderbilt All American in in four year in four years. The last one obviously was Earl Bennett, recognized as a second team All American by Walter Kent Foundation, Rivals.com, and Yahoo Sports. He earned second team All SEC uh, honors by coaches and writers. He had 15 career interceptions, tied Leonard Coleman for the most in team history. Um, he had Hayward. Uh, his career interception it was most among active SEC players. Uh, as a senior, started all 13 games at corner. He made 62 total tackles. He posted seven interceptions, which is the third highest single season total ever by a Commodore. Uh, he finished his career with a pair of interceptions and eight tackles for Cincinnati in the Liberty Bowl. He had a pick six against UConn, uh, and he, um, he also helped uh, set the stage for – the Doors comeback win that season posted two picks at South Carolina. He also uh, had five carries. He was tabbed as a midseason All American by SI and CBSSports.com. So, a uh, very, very, very decorated story career for him. Um, he was um, he was outstanding. Like I said, man, he was somebody that in those seasons where. You know, it was kind of like where Florida was dominating, and then you saw like 08, 09, 2010, 2011. That was kind of when like LSU, Alabama were starting to kind of rise a little bit. And and the SEC was still relatively run heavy. So that's why you probably see his tackles are uh, thoroughly inflated because he is not scared to come into the box and, and, and uproot a running back. Or, you know, you started to see more fast screens, so he probably made some a lot of tackles out there on the, on the perimeter where he would – um, you know, and I saw it firsthand some when I watched Vandy a little bit. Um, he would he would rip through a defender and just and just blow the screen up, right? Uh, and then he just you just looked out there and you were like, okay, where's 19? Okay, gotta find 19. If we don't find 19, we're screwed. And and so when they when they found him, they tried him and they they just it just wasn't happening for for the opposing team. So something about Casey Hayward that that stood out to me, man, it's just Hayward Island, man, and and you got to love it. Um, Arguably the best defensive back in program history, probably one of the most impactful as far as what he was able to do for that defense, um, made them viable. Uh, You know, during some of those – on some of those bowl teams, he was was somebody that was very pivotal in – helping the defense put up numbers, helping the defense get off the field, uh, setting up the offense with great field position. All of that stuff uh, was uh, a lot of it was due to Casey Hayward. And um, he was somebody that was very, uh, very integral, or I I guess you would say influential in that, in that role. So um, he's had a really, really nice uh, pro career as well. He's kind of, he's kind of carried over what he did well at Vandy into the pros and and you and one of the criticisms about Vandy players is huh they're they're good at Vandy but they're good because you know you're comparing them to other Vandy players and when they get against really good competition they kind of fizzle like that's kind of like the stigma which is not always true um unfortunately it was true at one point and that's kind of just been the forever thing but Casey Hayward definitely is not that he was he's been a prized um uh, prized free agent uh, in, throughout his, throughout his career, throughout most of his career, um, I don't know where he's going to end up now. He is currently a free agent, so um, it'll be kind of interesting where he uh, 
where he ends up there. So, um, you know, he is, um, you know, like I said, drafted in the in the second round by the Green Bay Packers, and uh, he was uh, the, he's his his laundry list of things for uh, for his pro career is absolutely outstanding. So he uh, last he played um, he was uh, played with the Falcons, and uh, he didn't play last year. He failed his physical, so he's somebody that hasn't really been healthy. So. Again, would like to see him get healthy and, and get back in um, if he can. Uh, he still he probably still has a couple of couple of seasons left where he can make an impact uh, before. Well, he's thirty four years old, so I don't know, but um, he might actually be done in the NFL. But he had a really nice career, uh, did a lot of really good things at Vanderbilt as well. So uh, Casey Hayward is certainly deserving of this list, and every single one of them should get their own cover. That's for dang sure. But we're going to pick one. That's going to be the fun of this. We're going to narrow this list down to one finalist based on who is the all-time Mr. Vanderbilt. So uh, Earl Bennett, Zach Cunningham, and Casey Hayward definitely uh, presented great cases here. Um, I, I don't know that there's an overwhelming favorite, but make sure you vote on this one, and uh, we'll we'll talk about it. And we'll uh, I'll have a uh, a show where we kind of I'll have an episode where we kind of reveal the results and, and things like that. So we'll let it kind of play out. But uh, anyway, we'll uh, we'll talk about it soon. But uh, on the next episode, we'll we'll uh, we'll surprise you. We'll give you three more. Um, and we'll present. We're going to present 12. We're going to narrow it down to four and then narrow it down to one. So this will be a fun series. Hopefully you guys, uh, hopefully got this will spark some really good conversation. That's kind of the point of this whole thing. So anyway, that's going to do it for us here on the Locked on Vandy podcast. We hope you had a great Tuesday. Uh, we'll see you back here tomorrow. But until then, anchor down.